Hello, I am Nicholas Coburn, and we're going to go over my talk, Threat Hunting. Ain't nobody got time for that. And just for a little bit of background as to about this, this was just sort of, um, well, I, I ran into some people who are just like, Threat Hunting is sort of on the back burner, but I personally think that it's important. And this just goes over a very brief overview as to what it is, how you can incorporate it, throw your own little flair on it since it's relatively new. And then most importantly, how you can sort of hand it off to your bosses or whoever the local defender people may be. So this is just the agenda. We're going to start off with who I am, what, why is threat hunting, how to do it, like on a budget, sort of, kind of, just sort of how what's the mindset for it how you can use potential and, and sort of the minimum requirements for that and then the most important part is just sort of proving why it's worthwhile to the boss or toward the people that are doing it so a little bit more about who i am i'm currently a SOC analyst um, and previously i was an army veteran where i got out as a captain and i was a threat hunter for a cyber unit um, I'm a big Darth Vader fan, as you can see as my hacker handle, as Darth Mr. Vader. If you have any questions about sort of like getting into hacking, anything like that, how the red team can tie up with the blue side, then just please reach out. Not a problem for me at all. So let's just get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is sort of just the concepts of threat hunting. And generally what you're this focus on is sort of the thing that's called the assume breach mentality, which is you assume something is going wrong with the network, uh, or you assume that there is an adversary within the network. And the main reason that that is important is you just want to be cognizant of some of the things that you're doing might be caught, looked at, or at least taken note of as the adversary. So they might be able to steal some of your TTPs. And the other thing is they generally want to uh, focus on a post-exploitation mentality just in terms of what are the things that you're, you're going to be looking for. Like initial access is generally going to be phishing in the real world, so you want to focus on they're in your network, what are some things that you can actually go after and be able to find them on the network. So generally speaking, we're going to talk about the threat hunting circle, and it, it's a it's an ongoing process all the time. But you generally just want to be developing ways to uh, to enhance the overall defense of the network. And so what we have there is that threat hunting is proactive threat detection. So what this means is, is like you will generally have your normal threat detections that you have. You'll have your general funnel of fidelity. Um, you'll have your, uh, like I said before, just normal detection mechanisms that your seam already set up. But what threat hunting is, is you trying to get a step up on the enemy, trying to go into the network and trying to figure out either where they may be or where they could be in the future and how you can get ahead of them. So going through the general loop of things, um, I I'll, I'll sort of will reiterate this, but through my own swing of the threat hunting framework, but on the, the right here, you can see the general threat hunting framework, which is basically get an idea, analyze what intelligence that you have from there, formulate a hypothesis, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, and then sort of executing that hunt right here, which is each, each company does it their own way. Um, but then what you want to do is you want to have an analytic that you can give them to the end because the real goal of a threat hunt is that once it's done, you want to have a you want to have developed a way where you can automatically uh, search for whatever you look for. For example, like if you if you see uh, like there's DNS tunneling, but you don't have it in before, you don't have an analytic, you don't have a detection mechanism. You do the threat hunt, you develop the detections for it, and the goal is that those are automatically running so you don't have to do it again. So a big thing is what threat hunting is not. So threat hunting is, it's not a replacement for other security tools that are out there. Um, 
it's not an audit, which is another thing that gets before because you're having it, it does mimic an audit if it's using outside people where you have people come in, tell you what's wrong with your network, and then tell you how to fix your network. This is not that. Um, and this is also not a replacement for other types of technology that can be just purchased out of the blue, whether it be like a Nessus scan or something like that. So what you're generally looking for, for somebody who is into threat hunting, is somebody who's familiar with the general under underlying architecture of whether it be Windows, Linux, Mac, somebody that just understands not just the network, um, but specifically the systems on the network and what they're supposed to do. Generally, what you're looking for is somebody who has a pretty good idea of what normal would look like within a network and how they can leverage that not let their past expertise to pick out the things that may be weird. This is typically found with either a SOC analyst, sometimes a system administrator. Generally, you'll find this a lot in reformed red teamers because for the red teamers, they just know the TTPs that enemies are using to get in and out of a network and uh, just problem solvers, just people who are just interested in going into uh, just new environments and trying something new. So there are a couple main components for a hunt maturity model. Um, so just going from the top to bottom, just as the quality and quantity of the data that you have, this is sort of just assessing how much telemetry is within your network, how the systems that you're running are working together and how much of an overall view you have. And with that data is just the tools that are provided. You can have a bunch of windows event log, syslog, all that stuff. But if they're not aggregated in somewhere like a scene, then it's just a lot of information that you don't know what to do with it. Uh, and then with that comes the skills and the analysts. A lot of this will just come with either time with your people or just, uh, just, just, just having just boots on the ground, just reps in the gym, things like that. And uh, that's, that's, the, that's the main thing. So the last two are just TTPs and Hi, uh, what, how used to developing threat hunts you, you are, but a lot of that will come with just experience. So the, the main requirements that you need to hunt is just a seam of some sort, whether it be Splunk, whether it be Elk, you need something to aggregate all that data that you have, because without all of that, you're going to be looking at terabytes of data and having no idea what to do with that. Uh, it's preferred that you have power sh PowerShell logs, some logs that show that command history of whatever sort, and um, raw network data. Uh, it's, it's, it's incredibly unideal, but you need to have some network traffic that correlates connections between systems within the enterprise. Once you have that, you can you can look at lateral movement and you can look at how somebody potentially got into the network. It's a great way to find a starting point of whatever your hunt may be. So the, my favorite part about this is now that you've started to like generally like think about what you're doing about what you're doing when you're hunting. Now it comes down to what public resources are out there that you can find to sort of assist in developing how you're going to hunt and what you're going to hunt. And for that, threat intelligence is incredibly important. Because not only could, let's say that there's a new vulnerability that specifically attacks something that your company uses enterprise-wide, and now like your whole company is very vulnerable, you would need to initiate in immediately initiate a hunt. Uh, and generally, there's a lot of open source places that are out there. I predominantly use Twitter. Twitter is the quickest way that a lot of people will post their own information out. But there's a lot of other great places such as Mandiant, CrowdStrike, bunch of news articles, FireEye, all, all those great places. And then what that information can help you do 
is it sort of outlines the minimum requirements for the hunt. It can help you develop your hypothesis. And uh, one of the things that could potentially be used later on is this thing called a TTP heat, heat map, which leverages MITRE's attack framework, as you can see at the top. And what that does is, is it sort of helps create a shared understanding of where your capability gaps and defensive gaps may be within your network uh, to people who might not be the most technical. So another way that I said before that you could operate those threat intelligence reports is gathering those threat reports and the new re released threat reports and then just aligning all the TTPs that you find in them and see how applicable this is to your network. And that's really where the fun begins because let's say you find something, uh, we'll say the, the, the printer nightmare, that affected a lot of Windows environments that are out there. A lot of people got very scared one very quick way you could have done this is there's uh, you could have just grabbed the Metasploit module for that. You don't have to necessarily throw it at everything, but look within it, see what things are attacking, um, identify where the, the vulnerability exists, and at that point, test it on your own network. Um, you can patch everything you need, but more importantly, is you can develop detection mechanisms to see if there's people even attempting it. So you can at least get an understanding of how many people are even looking at you, which helps out so much more than you could imagine. Being able to have an understanding of who your threats even may be could help quantify how much cost that you need to support. Because if you're seeing that they're advanced people, you could see that I would definitely need a lot more money. I could see like I definitely need a lot more training for these things. And it's just a great way to create that shared sense of uh, defense, of culture, of just securing the network between you, the developers, the team, and the, the C-level leadership. So how you create a hypothesis. There's a couple ways that you can do this there, but generally like you want to think about how a hunt is started. Uh, and there's a couple ways that it's done. One of the ways, is, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, is just sort of like sometimes your boss just says, hey, I want to do a hunt. Sometimes there's a hack and you're trying to figure out how far the hack has gone through. Or as I said before, maybe there's just a, a threat report that aligns with something that you have within your network. So. An example of what a hypothesis would be would be like I believe that an attacker could would laterally move with RDP and they wouldn't laterally move with much else, and we should develop some way to be able to check the sessions that are being run through, or how easy it would be. You could develop the hypothesis a little bit more as you go on, but once that's developed, then you can actually figure out how you're going to hunt. Um, but the end goal is to figure out how to solve this hypothesis in a automatic repeatable way that can easily be run. Another one that's pretty straightforward is that you could see that there you believe that you're not your company is not properly detecting encoded PowerShell command activity, which is a very easy way for attackers to get remote code execution within your network. So one thing that could easily be done is just researching the use of the encoded the encode command, uh, that PowerShell commandlet, seeing how it's properly be used, seeing what artifacts it drops, researching to see if that can be detected by what you have within your network. And if it's not detected, then just develop detection the develop detection mechanisms, play it back and forth with it to uh, get it to pop up properly when you're hacking. So Back to creating that shared understanding. This I'd like to talk about the deliverables, and this is sort of um, this is sort of a high level, it's the C level leadership assessment. This is this is deliverable for the bosses, so to speak. So the key things to know is this is it, it's not an audit, but 
if I tell you things using audit words, you're going to understand me. So you'll see in uh, on the right side of the screen what the definition of risk is, how risk is calculated, how it's broken down with vulnerable exposure and threat. These are all things that are all pulled from like project management, uh, CISSP type literature. So if you say these words, they're going to understand you. Now, I, I've brought up the, the, the threat map before because it's also one of the things that are just sort of universally understood. Now, if you look at, if you complete your threat hunt, you complete your hypothesis, and you see that there are, are, these, uh, are these known gaps, you can just put it on these graphs and then uh, provide that to leadership, saying that this is what the overall risk was. After we fix it, this is what the overall risk will be. And this is how the team improved the overall security posture of the network within X amount of time. Generally, it's pretty quick. So if you if they say that you've created probably like a 10 to 15 percent increase in overall security posture by these defined metrics, that is great for your team and overall great for the company. But then, how would you do this for a more technical person? That's where it comes into the actual detection mechanisms. And uh, what I li personally like to use is the learning detection strategy framework, because what this does is it creates a uniform library of detection mechanisms that you can use. And what these things have is just the overall goal, which you could be used as your hypothesis, the MITRE category for me, which helps assist with the threat map that we used before, the technical concepts, blind spots that you might have it, how you would validate the detection and the expected response. So an example of how this could be if we are using the PowerShell commands is the goal was to be to detect the use of the PowerShell encoded command lit. Um, we pick whatever minor category it is, it's gonna have time. Uh, a blind spot could be like if they, uh, if they're using some type of character encoding that might use it, whether it's if we're grepping for a specific lowercase tech ENC versus uppercase, or they try to do some variation of that, that could be a potential blind spot. And then where they validate it and to detect it, what I personally use is since uh, we would have a specific, whether it be search or whatever detection mechanisms you have, that's in there. And the validating thing would be a specific command that would ensure that it gets caught and then uh, just other, a couple other steps that you could run through to make sure that whatever detection imp detection mechanism you have is implemented properly and that you give a couple screenshots or pictures of the expected response for when it is picked up along with uh, within the expected response how the user uh, whoever w is working in the SOC what have you what they should be doing if they see this so it's not just like proof of like, hey, this is what this is. This is what you should be doing next, whether it be calling leadership, um, setting down a plan, whatever you'd like. So putting it all together, and this is going to be the last thing that we do. So you have your triggering event, and this is whether it be the boss or whatever. Um, and then the first thing you want to do is you want to have a conversation where you can scope it down to figure out specifically what you're going to be doing. Then you're going to just gather some open source intelligence, uh, whether that be threat reports or what have you, and then use those threat reports to develop your hypothesis. And then once you have a developed hypothesis, that's when you actually in initiate your hunt. This right here is where you actually do all your hunting. And then from there, you develop the report or your analytic, whatever you want, and then you pass that off to whoever it needs to be, and that is essentially threat hunting. That's pretty straightforward. I know that everybody got time for that, but now like it's shouldn't take more than a couple of days at most. And then once you've done that, you've would have saved your company hundreds of thousands of dollars and who knows what.